Call the meeting of the Kern County Laugh Code uh, order at this time. Uh, have roll call. Commissioner Fowler? Present. Commissioner McKibben? Present. Commissioner Scrivener? Commissioner Rivera? Here. Commissioner McLaughlin? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner McGuire? Here. Commissioner Couch? Here. <laughs> Commissioner Flores? Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, would everyone please stand for the flag salute at this time? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next order of business is approval of minutes of uh, April 27th. Motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. <laughs> okay. Did everybody, has everybody voted yet? Since we wait, cast. Everybody cast your ballot, please. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Move down to item four, public hearings, City of Bakersfield, Municipal Service Review. Rebecca. Thank you. Um, in your packet, you have this blue memo from me as well as a copy of the City of Bakersfield's Municipal Services Review. Um, we, um, I'm sorry. We have asked the city to review the services within their boundaries because they've requested a sphere of influence amendment and the commission is required to review those services. And so we've worked with the city, city staff has done this in-house. We've Other cities have also done this in-house um, and we've worked closely with them. So you have the document in front of you. Um, the, area that's the areas that are required to be reviewed are growth and population, disadvantaged unincorporated communities, infrastructure needs and deficiencies, financing constraints and opportunities, opportunities for shares, shared facilities, and the evaluation of management efficiencies. This document in your packet provides the information on each type of municipal service that the city provides, as well as any services provided to residents of the city by overlapping agencies, and you'll find their maps in a brief, um, brief information on each of those districts. I should point out that one of the maps in this um, packet for the Greater Bakersfield Separation of Grade District is um, not accurate, but we're working on, on fixing it, and it's not, it's not consequential to this. It's, it's not a problem. Um, it's just that there were, um, the engineer had some issues, and our GIS person had some issues with that map, but all the rest of them are correct and up to date. Um, this is required, as I said, in order to review their, their sphere of influence, and it's required by um, the government code that we, that we take a look at the city, how they provide their services, and whether or not they're pr provided efficiently. Um, one of the new things in the last couple of years is a disadvantage unincorporated communities, and the city of Bakersfield has identified 10 <coughs> disadvantaged unincorporated communities within their sphere of influence. They are aware that if they do any annexations that are adjacent to the ducks, um, that they are required to include the ducks or provide other information that, the, that they don't want to be annexed into the city. Um, the commission is required when adopting this document to make determinations, and those determinations or the recommended determinations can be found on pages um, 74 through 86 of this document, and they cover each of these areas that I um, previously talked about. The sections where they talk about each individual type of service, they also do um, kind of a, a summary at the end of those sections. I'm sure you've taken a look at those. They do a summary of each type of service, an analysis. They call it a service review analysis. So I'm asking that you adopt this document along with the recommended determinations. Um, since 
The law considers this a project, but we're simply gathering information. I also ask that you adopt a notice of exemption for this. Um, if you have any questions regarding this document, there are representatives from the city of Bakersfield here that can answer those, or any questions for me, I'd be, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. Is there anyone in the audience like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, any of the commissioners have any comments? Mr. Chairman. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Barbara. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question for Mrs. Moore. Um, I have not noticed the use of the term fringe before. Is that new with the duck law? It is. They call them fringe communities. Yes. Yes, I've, I've heard several cities refer to them as fringe communities. They're just kind of on the outskirts of the city. They're not quite in the city. They're within the sphere, okay. but they're not um, not within the city. It's not, it's not a technical term, no, but it, it is a term that's used. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Riviera. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Just real quick, so that I understand what we're doing right now, are we just voting on the first component, which is the municipal services review? Yes. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, move that then. Second. Okay. A motion and a motion and second. Cast your ballots. All eyes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Move down to uh, public hearings, Bakersfield City Municipal, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Move down to the next item, B, City of Bakersfield Sphere of Influence Amendment. Rebecca. Thank you. Your staff is currently processing an application for the City of Bakersfield, for an annexation of the City of Bakersfield, and I'm not asking you to consider that application right now, but I just brought it up because the city is requesting a sphere of influence amendment. It's a very small um, amendment. It's right, this little section here. And I'm not, you're not looking at the entire annexation area, but I'm using this map so that you can see exactly where it's at. Um, they have, of course, submitted their municipal services review as required by law. Um, they have adopted a notice of exemption for this sphere amendment. Um, there are things that the commission has to consider when amending a sphere of influence for an agency. And those things, the present planned land uses in the area, um, the probable need for public facilities, the present capacity of public facilities, the adequacy of those services, um, the existence of any social or economic communities of interest, those things have to be determined by the commission. And all of those things are part of the sphere questionnaire that you have in your packet. They're also part of the municipal services review that you just approved. And so those determinations um, that, that need to be made when amending a sphere of influence for a city can be found in your packet. So I ask that you adopt the, um, that you approve the amendment to the sphere of influence with those determinations, um, as well as the notice of exemption that was already adopted by the city for this project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. Anyone in the audience like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, the commissioners. Mr. Rivera. So the city of Bakersfield's always delighted to be able to grow our family. Uh, not that I think we do it any better than anybody else, but uh, I will uh, go ahead and move this item as well. Second. Second. Okay, that was a motion. Uh, who seconded it? I second. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, cast your ballots. All eyes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Move down to public comments. Anyone in the audience like to speak to the commission on any item that's not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll go down to commissioner items. At this time, I'd like to welcome uh, Chuck McGuire from the city of California, California City. Thank welcome. you, Welcome. And you. also, uh, Jose uh, Flores from Arvin, alternate. Thank you. Okay, now, does any other commissioners have any comments or 
things to us add? Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yeah. Can, I, I'm just curious, is there a reason why public comment is not at the beginning of the meeting? And it's instead after public hearings. I understand they could be, un or they are unrelated to public hearings, but I'm curious why that's the order. I don't think we have a set reason why that's the order. Um. I've been here longer than anyone else, and it's always been that way. <laughs> right. uh, now, you'll find that some cities move their uh, public comments to the end of the agenda. That's, that's not uncommon now. Well, that's, that's, that's odd. Could, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to do this, but I, I would, uh, I'd like to explore moving public comment to the beginning. I think if folks come, we have a long agenda, they shouldn't necessarily have to sit through a bunch of public hearings to make their, mm -hmm. make their thoughts known. Um, if I could ask that of staff, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I never thought of it before, but if you don't really have anything on the agenda, but you'd like to make a comment, it would be, well, awful to have to wait for a, a period of time to make your comments and then go home. If I may, Chairman, if I may, I also yeah. have a comment. You know, I, I also thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner Rivera, that I, I was also wondering, you know, this is the first time that I have seen public comments at the, pretty much at the end of the agenda. As in the practice in the city of Arvin, uh, I've been in city council for 14 years and it's always been, you know, after consent agenda, uh, it's been approved. Uh, I mean, after the agenda has been approved, we have public comments and then consent agenda items and, and follow everything else. Uh, you know, it's just, it's my first time. Uh, uh, Mr. Couch is training me in regards to how to <laughs> manage the movie there. Yeah. You know, I wasn't really prepared for, for tonight's meeting, but uh, it's very interesting and it's a learning process and I'm glad that I'm here for the first time. Um, thank you, Chairman, and nice meeting you, all of you. So, really, I, I don't think it'd take a motion to do that, would it? Yes. Uh, my, my three cities all have the comments at the beginning as yeah. Commissioner Rivera says, and Commissioner Flores. Uh, it's certainly not a problem, in, unless uh, the executive officer has an issue with it and doesn't sound like she does. Yeah. Uh, now, it's not on the agenda to vote on. Okay. Uh, but I think what we can do is we can take the, the sense of the commission okay. and uh, uh, look at bringing that back at the, at the next meeting with, with the order uh, uh, moved to the beginning of the agenda and see what the, what the, the sense of the commission is on that. What uh, the rest of the commissioners have the, about the same idea added to the first part of the agenda? Yeah, I don't have a problem. That's what we do at our oh. councils. <clears throat> okay, I see no problem. Uh, Rebecca, would you have that on the next month's agenda? Of course. <clears throat> okay, thank you. And uh, can I add another comment? If I, we also can, uh, you know, we're going to make these changes so the, uh, the uh, public needs to be aware of it that the changes are going to be taking place regarding public comments. You know, maybe sometimes uh, a, uh, members from the community, they come, you know, late in the agenda. So for them not to be here all, you know, pretty much on the whole session, as long as we can, you know, they, we notify them so they can be aware of it, that public comments will be at the beginning of the agenda. So that way they can be, you know, on time. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, anything else on that? Okay, seeing none, let's move down to the uh, item seven, general business, approval of claims list. Move approval. Second. Okay, motion second, uh, cast your ballot. All eyes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. At this time, uh, we'll go into pub, uh, closed session, public employees, retirement benefits, and other benefits. Mm -hmm. So, at that time, we will go into public, uh, closed session. <clears throat>
Oh, okay. Uh, back in regular sessions this time, uh, in the executive session, we had uh, no no uh, <coughs> uh, decisions made. But this time, I'll turn it over to the County Resources uh, Committee to uh, make recommendations for our recruitment. Good evening, Chairman McLaughlin, members of the Commission, Devin Brown with the Kern County Human Resources Division, the Employee, Employee Relations Officer. Uh, we're here to talk about our recommendation for the executive officer recruitment uh, and our salary and benefit recommendations and our recruitment timeline that we suggest uh, and seek your commission's approval so that we can begin the process to recruit for a new executive officer. Uh, after doing a salary survey of comparable counties within the state of California, for the LAFCO off executive officer position. Uh, we've done a, a, an extensive search of the salary and benefits offered to those types of positions throughout the county. Uh, our recommendation is to uh, offer this position with a salary range uh, beginning at $120,000 annually and up to $150,000 annually at the maximum salary. Uh, it's important for recruitment to love this type of, of position to uh, make sure that we recruit at a high level to put that salary in the, in the recruitment brochure. So it is our recommendation that that salary be included. We also are recommending that the benefits that are to be offered to this position also be listed, uh, although some of those may be negotiable based on the applicants uh, who uh, endeavor to apply for this position. Uh, the retirement plan currently, that is the minimum retirement plan is with CalPERS. It's a 2% at age 62 retirement plan. There may be uh, applicants who would uh, bump into a higher tier depending on their prior service in, in, in a CalPERS plan, uh, but it is important to advertise at the lowest possible retirement plan. So we would uh, recommend that that retirement plan be listed as well as the group medical, dental, and vision insurance uh, offered by the commission uh, with the 20% employee contribution to that insurance. Uh, also, the automobile allowance uh, would be another uh, item that we'd uh, include on the benefits. Uh, and then the paid sick leave and paid vacation benefits, which for sick leave would be up to 12 days per year, depending on years of service. and for vacation, 96 to 216 hours uh, of vacation annually, depending on years of service as well. And then also uh, the county and county agencies such as LAFCO also have paid holidays. And typically when in our recruitment brochures, we uh, advertise that as well. Uh, and currently there are 11 paid holidays for this position. So those are the benefits that we typically use, uh, list in our, in our recruitment brochures. We, we think those are appropriate for this particular recruitment uh, of this size and magnitude. And uh, so our, it is our recommendation that those items be listed as I've identified. Uh, we have developed a recruitment um, strategy and uh, timeline. Uh, with your commission's approval, we would uh, begin the recruitment on June 6th, Monday, June 6th of this year. Uh, and close it uh, on July 22nd of, of 2016. So a little bit over a month for it to be open. Uh, during that month, we would advertise uh, online uh, through Western Planner, Western City, CSAC, CalAFCO, and um, other, other similar types of, of advertisement um, to attract those candidates. We also, Kern County HR has a a LinkedIn uh, page, so we would uh, put that as well as a, as a announcement on our LinkedIn currently. Uh, we are advertising for the county administrative officer position, so uh, we're using social media as, as a new platform to advertise for our recruitments, uh, so we would additionally do that as well. Uh, after the recruitment closes, uh, we usually do an initial review of the applications. Uh, and we would seek to complete that fairly quickly uh, by July 25th uh, and provide your commission with the list of finalists on the August 8th, 2016 meeting as well uh, and notify those finalists uh, uh, on August 5th, by August 15th 
of 2016 of their stat status and conduct the final interviews for the the recruitment with your commission on August 24th, 2016. So the whole recruitment process would look to close by the end of August and um, that's our uh, proposed strategy and recruitment plan and be happy to answer any questions about the salary benefit levels as well as the recruitment timeline. And I'd like to introduce Carrie Ferris, who's our principal HR analyst with uh, the Kern County HR division, and she'll be handling this recruitment. She's our, our lead recruiter uh, and talent acquisition supervisor for Kern County HR, and she's very experienced and qualified, uh, and she's, she'll do a tremendous job. Be happy to answer any questions, uh, but th those are our recommendations. Okay, any comments or questions from the commission? Uh, seeing none, uh, Devin, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Entertain a motion this time to accept uh, the recommendations. I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. I'll make that motion. Okay, Did I get a second, Barbara second. <clears throat> Okay, cast your ballot. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Move down to <clears throat> item D, consider transfer of 50,000 from 2015 to 2016 budget. Rebecca. Thank you. Um, it looks like in this budget year, we're going to have a carryover of about $80,000 once once the year is done, the end of June. I'm asking that you approve the transfer of $50,000 into our reserve account. Part of that money would be used to um, fund my, pay, my vacation payout when I leave. It won't be $50,000, it's less than $30,000. Um, but I think that we should, should increase our reserve. And since we have the money left over in this budget, I'd like to transfer it to the reserve account, use what we need to, and the rest leave in the reserve account. It can eventually be transferred into the general or left in the reserve account. Um, one of the other things that we might look at funding is paying off um, additional, our, our unfunded liability for PERS. Last year we did that. We paid an additional amount on top of what was required, and so the money could be used for that as well once we get to the end of the year and find out what we actually have left. So I'm asking you to authorize the transfer of $50,000 from the 2015-2016 budget year into the reserve account to be used in the 2016-2017 year. Thank you. Okay, any comments or questions from the commission? Uh, Barbara? I just wonder what is the current balance in the reserve account? It's $50,000. Okay, if, any, no, if we don't have any more questions, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, motion is second. Cast your ballots. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move down to item eight, adjournment. The meeting is adjourned at this time.